Have you ever tried talking to your partner about money? How did that argument go? <laughs> and exactly how many glasses of wine did you need to relax? <laughs> At home, we tend to talk more about sports and celebrities than we do money and personal finance. Money is such a taboo subject. We tend to avoid it to prevent arguments and feelings of shame and resentment. At the holidays, we know we're never supposed to talk about sex, politics, or money at the dinner table. Well, that is unless you're in my family. <laughs> Money's one of the leading causes of stress in relationships and one of the top causes of divorce. Stress from a breakup creates trickle-down effects in all areas of our lives, impacting our health, our work, and our kids. For 23 years, I've worked with couples and their finances at all income levels, and I've had a front row seat to see how money impacts relationships. In fact, I'll get a call weekly or so from a client that goes something like this. Hey, Meredith, I know you're not my therapist, but dot, dot, dot. If you're already talking about money with your partner and it just hasn't been working, you may be doing it incorrectly. There are five things to consider when discussing personal finances with your partner. Contribution, transparency, values, equality, and vision. Let me start by introducing you to my friend Nadia and John. Nadia was the main earner in the household, or the breadwinner. And in 2019, over 25% of married women out-earned their male partners. Congratulations, ladies. Nadia was paying for a house cleaner and a nanny. But here's the deal. Nadia was resentful. She was resentful of the fact that she couldn't spend more of her hard-earned income on herself. So she created a secret bank account. And a point came when she needed to talk to her husband, John, about staying at home with the kids while she worked. But she was so hesitant to have this conversation because of conventional gender roles. But we have a choice in how we measure contribution. Just because one partner might make more or less than the other, there are some things that an income statement simply cannot measure. For example, how much is it worth to you to have your kids safely picked up from school? And exactly how many loads of laundry are equivalent to an annual bonus? I went to Georgia Tech, and I still haven't figured out the mathematics on that one. Nadia didn't need a sacred bank account if there had been a more open and honest dialogue with her husband around her need for personal expenses. She could have initiated this conversation earlier. It's so important that both partners have a truly honest conversation about each other's income, expenses, assets, and debts. And ideally, it's done without judgment. This allows both partners to share what they make and what they spend without secrets. Without transparency, trust breaks down, and it's difficult to move towards a shared financial future. Next, let me introduce you to Drew and Sophia. Drew worked all during college, and he paid for school himself, then went on to get an MBA. His wife, Sophia, had taken on some student loans, and she went to her local community college. When it came time for them to send their kids to university, Drew felt it was important that their kids work and help contribute some towards their own tuition. But Sophia wanted their kids and felt like they should pay for everything for them. Ultimately, Sophia decided that 
Since Drew had an MBA, he knew better on this kind of thing. Ladies, don't do that. Values typically come into play when we talk about money. Personal history and our own experience with money greatly influences the things that we do. Financial value decisions are not only derived from a cost-benefit perspective, but also from an emotional standpoint. It's critical that decisions like this are discussed early in the relationship so that both partners are aligned. Research tells us that the partner with greater income, education, or age tends to hold more financial power in a relationship. But it's important that we create equality for both partners regardless of these factors. Each partner's voice should be respected and acknowledged regularly. Finally, I want to introduce you to Jordan and Riley. Jordan has kids and went through a messy divorce. She's now in a relationship with Riley, who also has kids. Things were going well, and they were beginning to discuss marriage. But they knew before they got married, they needed to have the big money conversation. But Jordan loves her kids and wants to leave them a financial legacy. But it was important to Riley that she have financial security or wouldn't run out of money in the event that they got divorced or if Jordan passed away. Although they have different financial goals, they still have a vision of a shared life together. The vision is important because then you and your partner can work backwards to help meet everyone's goals separately. There are tools and methods for both partners to get what they want together. What do you both want to plan for in the future? You can still have a shared vision, but have separate goals. There are ways to make both work. A bigger money vision conversation is critical for everyone's future financial and emotional protection. And as uncomfortable as it may be, a shared financial vision is so important in any long-term relationship. Contribution, transparency, values, equality, and vision create better dialogues around money. And actually talking about money fosters knowledge and experience, which creates a happier relationship and ultimately leads to greater financial success for both partners. If you're already talking about money with your partner and just aren't making the progress you want, consider setting up a standing monthly meeting with bo for both of you to update your balance sheet, your cash flow statement, review expenses, and consider integrating some of these topics that we've talked about, contribution, transparency, values, equality, and vision, into bigger, broader topics. And in case you are wondering, it's perfectly okay to do this meeting with a bottle of wine, too.